Okay, for number 15, uh, remember that uh, this kind of problem uh, gives uh, quite a lot of students a lot of trouble. Okay, so I want to make sure that uh, everyone knows what's going on. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at uh, what's the, what the function is. We have f of x is equal to negative x squared times parentheses x minus four to the fifth power and then parentheses x plus two. So, uh, well, as we said in class, we love factored form and factored form it is. So we have these factors. So we can tell the roots very easily. So we have three roots or three zeros. We have x equals to zero. We have x equals to four. We have x equals to negative two. Uh, I just want to make a point here. Uh, that is, the reason why we say these are the numbers, and some of the some students they would think that oh, it's always the opposite. Isn't the opposite thing uh, of the uh, the opposite thing of the parentheses? Well, I mean, sort of yes, but uh, but the real meaning why it is or it looks like the opposite is because when we say zero. We mean f of x equals to zero. We mean y value is zero. That's what we mean. And we ask the question, uh, well, so what kind of x values would make the y value zero? So if you have, say, x equals to four, well, then you have four squared, four minus four to the fifth power, four plus two. And then this part right here would become zero because four minus four is zero, zero to the fifth power is zero. So anything times zero will be zero. So that's why we love factored form because it can tell us what could equal to zero very, very easily. Okay, so we know these zeros. Uh, we know the sign of leading coefficient, which is negative. We know the y-intercept because it cuts through the origin. Anything that cuts through the origin is both the x and the y-intercept. The degree, now this is another thing, the degree. Uh, students may not be very clear about how to read the degree. Now, uh, and this is also what happened when students try to memorize something and then they memorize the wrong thing. When we say degree, we're asking what is the highest power for x for this particular function okay now the answer is not two not five because there are there are multiple places with x and they are going to multiply each other so what you are thinking what you should be thinking is all right we have x squared and if i multiply this uh parentheses we will have x cubed Oh, no, sorry, x to the fifth power at the end. And then we have this x to multiply as well. So if we are going to multiply all of these together, we will get something like negative x to the h power and then plus something more, which I have no idea. And that's not our job at this point anyway. So, so the thing is, we will have x to the eighth power. And that's our degree. Okay. All right. Now, and the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, some students, when they read the non factored form, when they read the non factored form, maybe something like this. All right. Um, all right. Something like this. Um, I'm just making up one random cubic function. So if I ask you, what's the, what is the, uh, what's the degree for this? Well, the answer is very simple, it's three, but some students, because they just memorize adding the exponents without knowing the reason, they will end up adding all these exponents together and they may give you the answer six as a result, which is incorrect. So again, it's very important that you know what you're doing, why you're doing. If you are just memorizing steps without justification, it's a ticking time bomb. Okay, it's gonna blow up. 
So the degree is eight, okay? So let's go ahead and put some dots on the, uh, uh, put some dots on the, uh, on the graph. So we have zero at zero. We have uh, another zero at X equals to four. And we have uh, another zero at X equals to negative two. So now, how do we make this graph? So we have a few questions to ask. Where does it start? Does it start high? Does it start low? Uh, where does it end? Does it end high? Does it end low? When it passes through the x-intercepts or the roots, does it bounce or does it go through? Or does it go through in the little squeaky line way? And that is the, uh, like the cubic function, that kind of way. So we have all these questions and we need to answer all these questions. So now uh, in class, you're given a handout, there's some acronyms and I'm not a big fan of memorizing some random acronyms. And I have a way to tell whether it starts high or, start, uh, whether it starts high or low by just thinking that, wait, hold on. If I have a negative number, let's say negative 10, what is negative 10 to the eighth power? Is it a positive number or a negative number? Well, if you have an even number power, that means you multiply by itself. You're multiplying by itself an even number of times. It will end up to be a positive, positive number. So x to the eighth power, if you put a negative number into the x, you will get a positive number, but there is an, there is a negative sitting right in front. So if you have a negative 10, you have a gigantic number with a negative in the front. So that tells us the graph is gonna start low. Just put a negative 10, test it out yourself. And where does it end? Well, you may remember that, uh, that if it's an even number powered function, uh, then, um, then it's going to start and end at the same location. Okay, if it starts slow, then it ends low. Or you can just go ahead and think about, hmm, 10 to the eighth power. It's a big number. And then there's a negative sitting right in front of it. Therefore, it must end low. All right. Now, these are the things that we know for sure. We know that it starts low for sure. It ends low for sure, because that's just no way. Uh, we know these are the roots. And because we know these are the roots, there should not be any other unexpected roots to appear, which some students did not think about that when they were taking a test earlier on. They may draw a graph and somehow there's additional x-intercepts that's beyond anybody's understanding right now so so we answer the question whether it start high or low or it ends high or low we answered those two questions and now how does the graph behave when it and uh, when, when it approaches to the roots so this is where we have to understand the uh, the concept of multiplicity you see the x square that means the multiplicity is two you see the fifth power, that means the multiplicity is five. If there's no power, that means the power is one. That means, oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, I moved the uh, multiplicity and I wrote the multiplicity in the wrong place. Uh, so for negative two, the multiplicity is one. The importance of knowing multiplicity is that you would know how it passes through the x axis. If it's a multiplicity of one, it's a straight pass through. If it's a two or any even number, it's a bounce, okay? Uh, if it's a three or five or any kind of odd number, it's gonna have this kind of turn, okay? Or uh, this kind of turn, it gets flat and then it, it continues its, uh, its movement. A little S sideways S. So based on this understanding, so now we can say, all right, if the graph is gonna start low and then it will go to negative two 
and it's going to pass through negative two and then it will come back to zero and it would have a bounce at zero and then it's go back it's it will go back up and then it will head back down to go to x equals to four and because of the multiplicity being five so it's gonna have this uh, little strange turn like this so this would be the sketch of this graph all right now we are not going to ask where it turns where are the turning points or how high it's going to go up we're not going to ask those questions because there's no way we can find out at this moment okay when you go to calculus then you would learn how to find out these numbers but for now in pre-calc this is good okay